Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation. We have 45 to the power x plus 75 to the power x, and that's all divided by 27 to the power x plus 125 to the power x. And the answer is 15 over 19. So we're going to be solving for x values, real x values, and we can also briefly talk about complex values. So to be able to solve this equation, I want you to notice, first of all, that 45 is made up of 5 times 9, 75 is 3 times 25, 27 is 3 to the third power, and 125 is 5 to the third power. So in other words, I'm talking about the prime factorization of these numbers, and what they have in common is they're made up of 3s and 5s. And when I say that, 27, does it have a 5? Yes, it does have 5 to the power 0. So let's go ahead and consider each of these numbers and let's write them like 45 is 5 times 9, so I can write it as 3 to the second times 5. And then 75 is 3 to the first times 5 to the second. And then 27 is 3 to the third. And 125 is 5 to the third power. As you can see, 3 and 5 are the only primes that we have to worry about. This tells us that we can use substitution. And substitution, as you know, is very powerful. And since we have x as exponent, let's go ahead and set 3 to the power x equal to a and 5 to the power x equal to b. Okay? Now, what happens to 45 to the power x? Think about it. So we can write this as 3 to the second times 5 to the power x, and then this becomes 3 to the power 2x if you distribute the exponent, and times 5 to the x. And since 3 to the x is a, this is basically a squared times b. Make sense? So we can basically do that, and we don't have to repeat this process because we hopefully know what that's going to look like. So 45x is going to look um, like this. 75 to the power x is basically going to be a times b squared. 27 to the x is going to be just a cubed. And finally, 125 to the power x is just going to be b cubed. So let's go ahead and put this into our equation. So again, our equation was 45 to the power x plus 75 to the power x divided by 27 to the x plus 125 to the x. And that's equal to 15 over 19. Great. Let's go ahead and make the substitutions. So we're going to replace 45 to the x with this, a squared b. And then 75 is going to be a b squared. And at the bottom, we're going to have a cubed plus b cubed, which should remind you what? Sum of two cubes. Yes, that's right. So one of the things uh, we need to think about is, can we simplify this? And what happens if we do? Are we losing any rules? Because when it, anytime you have an equation and you cancel out some factors, you have to be careful because you could be losing some solutions. It's basically the opposite of introducing extraneous solutions. Anyways, so we can go ahead and factor out an AB a plus b, and then at the bottom, sum of two cubes gives us the following, and this is equal to 15 over 19. What do you notice? a plus b is a common factor, so I'm going to do the following. I'm going to assume that a plus b does not equal 0 and simplify this. And then I'm going to consider the case where a plus b is 0, and we'll look at it. So let's go ahead and cancel these out. Remember, a plus b does not equal 0. And from here, we get something like this. Let's cross-multiply. We get 15a squared minus 15ab plus 15b squared equals 19ab. And then subtract 19ab, you get 15a squared minus 34ab plus 15b squared equals 0. It's important to set it equal to 0 because we want to solve this equation, which can be turned into a quadratic. It's actually quadratic in A or B, but we want to use a single variable, which is going to make it a little easier, I think. Anyways, so let's go ahead and do this. Divide everything by B squared, and you'll see in a little bit why. We've done this before. This is going to become 1, and then B goes into B squared, B times, so this is, these two are going to cancel out, and from here we're going to get A squared over B squared. So this kind of turns into a quadratic in a over b, which we can substitute again and solve. So let's go ahead and set a over b equal to something. How about t? 
so a is equal to bt in other words so let's go ahead and do that we get 15 t squared minus 34 t plus 15 equals 0 so this is a quadratic equation and I can definitely use the quadratic formula or you can use the x method and factor this using um, x method how does the x method work so here's how the x method works you basically multiply these two numbers 15 times 15 is 225 that becomes your product and your sum is going to be negative 34. so here's your goal you look you got to find two numbers such that uh, their product is 225 and their sum is negative 34. can you find two numbers whose product is 225 and whose sum is negative 34 I think you can. I'm thinking about negative 45 and positive 5. Does that work? I don't think so, right? Because their sum is going to be negative 40. But if you, I guess if you try different options, we can do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at you know, ways we can factor 225. That should give us an idea. 1 times 225, uh-oh, notability acting up. 1 times 225, I have no idea why this is happening. Okay. So, 1 times 225, and then 2 doesn't go, 3 goes, and that will be 3 times 75, and then 4 doesn't go, 5 goes, 5 times 45, and then 6 doesn't go, right? 7 doesn't go, 8 doesn't go, 9 goes, and I think that should be 9 times 25. And yes, this is the one that gives us 34. Have you noticed? If you add them up. But we want negative 34, so we're going to use negative 9 and negative 25, as our two um, numbers make sense there because their sum needs to be negative so now these two numbers basically give us a way to break down the negative 34 we can write it as minus 90 minus 25 t plus 15 and then this becomes factorable by grouping and then we get the idea we get the solutions so for example here we can take out a 3 t 5 t minus 3 minus 5 5t minus 3 and common factor 5t minus 3 and 3t minus 5 or you could do trial and error and factor it. it's not too hard by testing out some different values or the quadratic formula so these are the factors we get t equals 3 over 5 or t equals 5 over 3 but what is t right t is equal to a over b so we can set it equal to a over b and this is a over b so from here we get the ratio of a to b but how is that going to help us solve this problem for a and b because we have a single equation that we kind of need to solve right we need to solve for a and b so here's what you can do you can go ahead and uh, replace uh, a with 3k and b with 5k and pretty much do the same thing and that should give you the solution right okay so but what is a and what is b let's think about it for a minute right a is 3 to the x and b is 5 to the x so when I got actually I don't think I'm gonna need this so when I say a over b when t is equal to 3 over 5 that means a over b is equal to 3 over 5 which is 3 to the x over 5 to the x when this is established that means x is equal to 1 easy right or if t is equal to a over b and that's equal to 5 over 3 and that is 3 over x 3 to the x to the, divide by 5 to the x. This basically means that 3 over 5 to the x equals 5 over 3, which is the reciprocal of 3 over 5. So I have to use a negative 1, but this means that t is equal to negative 1. Okay? I mean, x is equal to negative 1. Sorry about that. So x is negative 1 or 1, and basically that brings us to the end of the studio. But before that, let's talk about how uh, or why a plus b cannot be 0 or should it be 0 could it be 0 what is a and what is b we have 3 to the x plus 5 to the x can that be 0 not for real values of x but what happens if x is complex so is it possible to get something like 5 to the x equals negative 3 to the x when x is a complex number and you can kind of explore it this way you can kind of divide by this and set it equal to negative 1 and then you can start complexifying this by writing this as e to the power i times pi plus 2 pi n and then just go ahead and take some logs and so on and so forth and that should give you some solutions all right 
And this brings us to the graph, which is intersected at two points, as you can see here, x equals 1 and x equals negative 1 are the real solutions to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.